I know a lot of you can't wait for my front lever video to drop. And frankly, me too. But the perfect form front lever is way, way harder than the muscle up. I've been wondering what else I can do to speed up the progress besides putting in the work. I came across a post where my friend John, who is a personal trainer and health coach, designed a personalized training plan for his clients based on their genetics. That piqued my interest because I'm a science guy and I love to try new things. Therefore, I reached out to John and asked him to explain to me how this works. Today, we're basically looking at your genetics and your SNPs. And the SNPs stand for single nucleotide polymorphism. Basically, within our DNA, we all have these polymorphisms. There are these genetic anomalies that we can now observe today. Back in the day, this might have been 10 to 15 years ago. I think it costs up to a million dollars to have your genome fully sequenced. And then when companies like 23andMe came out, you could get your entire genome sequenced once they figured this out for about $200. There are these technologies, and the one that we use for you is based off of Dr. Rhonda Patrick's website called foundmyfitness.com. And it's a very thorough rundown of certain SNPs that you have, which might dictate what you need to do as far as supplementing, how you eat, and how you train to make sure that your body is aging as it should, and you're not beating yourself up or causing too much injury. I did have a 23 and me report from a long time ago and I run the online fitness test and I show it to John and obviously John is expert here so can John give me some summary on the report? On the first finding that I saw with your vitamin D binding protein you actually had three different SNPs that dictate that you have a genetic risk for vitamin D deficiency and I've actually run into this a lot with my clients simply by supplementing vitamin D and trying to get outside of the sun every day you know notice a huge surge in energy on a day-to-day -day basis, sleep gets better, and generally you recover better. So vitamin D might not sound that important for athletic performance, but it absolutely is because if your hormones are working better and you have more testosterone. You mentioned about going out and walking under the sun to get vitamin D. Is there like a particular length that you will recommend? Is it like 10 minutes, 30 minutes? I would recommend getting a blood test first before I give you a recommendation. Let me tell you what I did because I actually have the three SNPs that I looked at on your report are also on my report. So what I started doing was supplementing about 5,000 IUs of vitamin D with the cofactor K2. And I'll do that every single day. And I do find that my energy is very much improved. The time between my heavy workouts, I'm able to recover faster. I want to talk about one called Actin-3. It's basically you have the C T variant, someone like you is recommended to choose high load, low repetition resistance training to build muscle and high intensity interval training to improve your VO2 max during endurance exercise. So basically saying you lifting heavy weights for kind of that one to five repetition range, along with your skill work on the bouldering wall is what you need to stay healthy. If someone came along and said, no, you need to be able to run a half marathon and you try to do that, that might increase your time that it takes for you to recover before the next workout. It might actually cause you to lose too much muscle mass that would make you worse at your other events. So someone like you instead might want to be doing some sort of plyometric training to get your cardio right, to get your heart rate up. That'd be something like doing three sets of five box jumps, really, really low volume, but high, high intensity. So I do found higher low, low rep, training scheme work better for me. I progress faster that way. I always thought that was for everyone. I have no idea that's actually related to my genetics. So I was accidentally doing it right for the past few years. That was good to know. We typically gravitate toward things that we're good at. That's why you see the elite athletes they're almost genetically made for it. This one is new to me. It's called PGC1 Alpha. And this says you have reduced cardiorespiratory fitness. It has some recommendations for you. You could do something like 
cold exposure, which would be like taking a cold shower. It can help with the conversion of brown fat. Brown fat is metabolically active fats and all babies have brown fat, but adults typically lose it, but you can actually maintain it by doing cold exposure. You could be out in the cold where you used to be shivering, but through breathing exercises, you can maintain your body heat. And what this brown fat will do, it'll help your metabolism to kick up. So you start burning body fat when you get cold. The cold shower idea, yeah, maybe I should try that out and see how I feel about it. The cold showers are good for you in general. We'll move on to another one. Now it's called COL5A1. This SNP dictates that you are at increased risk for Achilles tendinopathy. So basically saying that over time, you may have some problems with the Achilles tendon. And it recommends that you consult a physical therapist or trainer to incorporate prehabilitation exercises to determine the optimal training load to achieve goals while minimizing the risk of injury. I would just make sure that the muscles in your lower leg stay supple enough that they aren't feeling like they're going to be pulled or they're overly tight. Just warm up a little bit more. It can be something like jumping rope, doing some ankle mobility exercises. It doesn't have to be complicated. I barely use my lower legs because if you do say calisthenics, that's all arms. And if you're talking about climbing, some legs, uh, but it's not like super intense. I guess I never have a chance to push my legs to the point that there could be a potential injury. I see a new challenge coming for you, the maintenance and growth of power. What we're trying to do with this power production is work our entire nervous system. You're doing dynamic movements on the wall. This could really benefit from some power training. It can be like a kettlebell swing, a kettlebell snatch, a box jump. And seriously, you could probably implement it one or two days a week, you would probably see an improvement in your overall height that you can jump off the ground, which would be great for training the Achilles tendon and the lower legs that you might not be touching as much. Let's move on to the last one that I pulled up for you, the CLT CL1. You're the TT allele. And this means that you have the hunter gatherer phenotype. You may be less tolerant to carbohydrates in the diet. During modern times, when carbohydrates carbohydrates are abundant, the T allele may result in raised blood sugars and possibly worsen insulin resistance. And the recommendation for someone with the T allele, you may benefit from limiting processed carbohydrate intake and avoiding added sugars. I definitely do avoid food with added sugar. That's a big thing for me. I don't have a strict diet, but I'm definitely more gravitates towards like the paleo diet where it's mostly like meat and vegetables. And because the issue about carbs for me is that when I eat it, especially when I have to work, I'll get food coma and then I won't be able to focus for one or two hours during works. So I tend to avoid taking too much carbs. But you know, on the weekends, if we're going to a restaurant or having a treat, I still take carbs. So I'm not strictly avoiding carbs. A plus for you, you've been doing a lot of this stuff right, just even without knowing. I would say for someone like you, because you are training so hard, you can have a starchy carbohydrate every day. But the time when you do that would either need to be direct directly post-workout, or you could save all of that for nighttime because those carbohydrates can actually help with serotonin production. And the serotonin is the precursor to melatonin. So when you eat the carbohydrates at night, you typically sleep a lot better because of that melatonin and blood sugar stays regulated throughout the night. Some people, when their blood sugar drops during sleep, they'll wake up around 2 or 3 a.m. They can't get back to sleep. It's because it's dry having cortisol too high at night when your cortisol shouldn't be rising until right when you wake up in the morning. For someone like you, I would recommend play with the carbohydrates a little bit, play with the plyometric and high intensity exercise a little bit. Let's see if we can get you outside walking in the sun a little bit more, or maybe even supplementing some vitamin D with K2 and just analyze how you feel. I would postulate that you would improve your gains on the bouldering wall and you'd have a lot more energy and even sleep better. I would advise all of the audience to check out a report like this. You have to know that you can't look at one specific thing and then try and push a protocol. It's all about the holistic lifestyle. Again, we need to make sure that diet's on point, rest is on point, exercise, stress reduction, and maybe some supplementation on top of that. That's amazing, John. I love it. I super appreciate 
talking to you, Geek Climber. If anyone wants to check out more about me, I have a podcast where we get into the details on a lot of this stuff, and that's called Vital Metabolic, the art and science of strength. And we're on Instagram at Vital Metabolic. Check it out, guys. I listened to the podcast. It's super awesome. Check it out.